Okay, everybody, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, thank you very much for joining. I think we uh, have most everybody in that has registered. So uh, I think it's safe to go ahead and start this webinar. Um, first of all, to start, uh, I'd like to just once again say thank you again for being here and showing interest in Armstrong International. Uh, more importantly, showing interest to uh, the evaporative cooling sector and data center sector of our company. So um, without further ado, I will go ahead and, and begin the presentation. So this webinar is on evaporative cooling and humidification for data centers. And um, just a few short uh, housekeeping notes to point out before we start. Um, the webinar length should be approximately one hour, we may go a little shorter. Uh, just to set aside time to include some Q&A sessions at the end. Uh, all participant lines will be muted, so we encourage you to submit all of your Q&As in the Q&A section during the presentation at any time, and we'll answer those questions at the end of the presentation. This session is being recorded and it will be available on our YouTube channel, and you will also be able to get a recording sent to you if you would like to do so. Uh, we, we recommend closing out any background apps or browsers that may impact your streaming quality. And um, I think that pretty much wraps up our housekeeping points there. So make sure to use those Q&As, put those Q&As in our Q&A section. And uh, Joel Boynton, who's also on the line with me today, will be reviewing those. and. And so will I as I present to uh, address them at the end. All right, today's presenters is my today's presenters are myself, Andrew Wittick. I will do a little short intro on myself. I'm the specialty market manager for North America for Armstrong International and the specialty market manager uh, entails the markets of data centers, clean rooms, cannabis farms, insect farms, other emerging markets that don't currently fall underneath uh, core vertical and Armstrong. I live in Vero Beach, Florida, so that's where I'm currently presenting to you all from today. And my colleague is on the line with me, Joel Boynton. I will let him introduce himself. Go ahead, Joel. Hi there. Uh, I think I know most of the people looking at the list of attendees, and uh, it's good to see all those familiar names through the magic of the internet. Uh, I'm presenting from Michigan today, and uh, my role is North American sales manager for the Armstrong humidification line. So a lot of what you're seeing today falls under my products. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so just to get started, I figured I'd, uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with Armstrong, even though I see most of you are familiar names, so just we'll get through this a little bit quicker then. Um, so just to start off with a uh, Armstrong International at a glance. Armstrong was founded in 1900. We are a family owned and operated thermal utilities manufacturing company. Um, we have about 3,000 employees and representatives serving in more than 100 countries as of 2020. Um, one of our uh, core, core values is uh, faith in God, family, and job, and it's in that order. Uh, very, very strongly emphasized in that order. That's the way we perceive it and like it to be perceived. But um, our vision is is pretty unique where we like to provide an enjoyable experience for every customer, partner and employee. And uh, this goes this goes a long way. Um, in that, uh, you know, our commitment and practice of our core values by our employees have really guided us through some difficult times. And uh, also some prosperous times, but spanning for more than over a century. Um, so we really look forward to upholding those values and, and continuing the legacy of the leadership uh, that hopefully lasts for some more centuries to come. 
Okay, Armstrong International is as it's uh, as it looks very very wide widely traversed across the globe. We have twelve manufacturing facilities spanning all the way from Colorado and Mexico um, across the globe to Korea and Japan, as you can see here uh, depicted on this map. So no matter where you are, we most most likely have a manufacturing facility nearby. Armstrong has been a, a beacon in the thermal utility manufacturing industry for centuries, as I just previously stated. But uh, more recently, we have uh, ventured into some new markets. Hence, my position being created as a specialty market director. Um, and we've uh, our, our biggest focus in this new sector is data centers, as you can see in this picture here. Um, we've had a lot of success in Europe and the uh, Middle East with um, our uh, data center sales. Uh, but now we're starting to make a name for ourselves in North America and with our multitude of product lines, but, but more specifically, um, our EVA pack, which we'll get into today. I know everyone is interested in. So let's talk a little bit about um, cooling and humidification in data centers. Cooling and humidification are important to protect the IT and data against overheating damage, electrostatic discharge, uh, more commonly known as ESD, and condensation corrosion, just to name a few. Cooling and humidification should be done by reducing energy consumption with a performant and ecological process. So uh, just to go a little bit further about ESD and the risks it creates, um, a major cause of voltage spikes in electrostatic discharge are ESD. Uh, although they, they are extremely short duration, transients can be lethal to the wafer thin surfaces of semiconductors, as, as you can see an example here. Um, these strikes can carry as much voltage as lightning and actually strike faster. Um, low relative humidity and not a very low dew point in general produce conditions that are very favorable for high voltage generation. Uh, so, um, a, a recommended relative humidity between 40 and 60 percent is ideal to uh, avoid these ESDs. That kind of um, brings us into the two forms of cooling and, humidi and humidifying in the data center world that we see. These two methods are sensible cooling and adiabatic cooling. Sensible cooling uh, displaces sensible heat to another place. An example is uh, mechanical cooling, which is typically very energy intensive. Uh, this type of cooling does not allow humidification. Contrary is adiabatic cooling, which transforms sensible heat to latent heat via natural processes. An example is ice to water, or water to steam, um, things like that, which are also known as phase changes. Uh, this type of Humidification allows for cooling, which is very ideal for data, sense, data centers since they need both humidification and cooling. So one of the ways that Armstrong International tackles this uh, problem for these data centers is with our adiabatic cooling solutions, which we have a few, but more uh, specifically, we, we do this with our EVA pack, which you guys can see here. Um, EVAPAC is one of our newer uh, humidifiers to our humidification line. Um, it, it has had some major success in Europe. Uh, it's been over there for about five years, and it's just recently come over to North America over the last two to three years. So it's been gaining traction um, since then. Here is the uh, Typical process description of our EVA pack, which you may be familiar with already, but some may not. So I figured we would just cover that real quick. Um, the EVA pack series is a hygienic evaporative humidifier and cooler. 
It converts water liquid to water vapor using an adiabatic process. Dry air passes through the corrugated bank of wet, wetted cells media made from non-organic wet fibers. So as you can see depicted in the picture here, typically you have hot dry air entering through the back of the EVA pack in this picture and then leaving cool, wet, uh, and humidified which is very beneficial to data centers in reducing that ESD and controlling the uh, humidification levels. So there's two different um, types of adiabatic cooling we see. The first is uh, direct adiabatic cooling, which is rather simple. We bring in outside air, it's cooled down and humidified, humidified using the adiabatic process in this situation, our EVAPAC unit and then it's directly injected into the server room. The second kind of adiabatic cooling is indirect adiabatic cooling. This style uh, introduces outside warm air, which is then also cooled down using the adiabatic pr uh, process. That air will enter a heat recover exchanger to cool down the return air. This solution is convenient when the return air needs to be cooled without increasing its humidity. So as you can see here, the EVA pack will bring in outside air and mix it with the return air to not add humidification as strongly as it would with direct um, cooling. Okay, so now we get into why EVA pack uh, is so successful and um, so successful in the data center industry. And it's mainly because of our evaporative media and its, and its design. It allows it to um, have a very high, efficient, and low pressure drop performance. So our media is a non-organic fiberglass media that is impregnated with silver ionizations to um, prevent and withstand the uh, formation of bacteria, formation and growth of bacteria. But as you can see here on the left, um, our media is angled at a 30 degree by 30 degree flute angles. This allows the proper distribution of water over the media to have the highest air to surface contact ratio. Also, another thing that aids in our air to surface contact ratio is our fluting height and period. Um, as you can see here depicted on the picture on the right, our fluting period is 10 millimeters long by 5 millimeters high. This is very unique in the fact that uh, no one else in the market has this. Our fluting height and flute period um, really play a major role in outperforming our competitors. Here's a good example of a way to wrap your head around uh, how much more we're able to pack into a cubic meter with our fluting period and height compared to others. Um, so if you were to take a, a cubic meter of our meat of our media and take each layer out and lay them flat on the ground, you would cover about a full tennis court and a third. And then you take all those sheets you just laid out and flip them over, and then you would fill up another um, tennis court and a third. So that gets you to about 640 meters cubed uh, of, of media contact surface area into that one cubic meter. Um, this is exponentially more than our competitors, which you can see down here only, only get about 440 meters cubed of air to water contact surface area. So this is, this is really our, uh, our characteristic that pulls us away from others. Going into our media a little bit more since it, since it is one of the most integral pieces of our product. Um, our media is very high quality in regards to how it is manufactured and um, the certifications it holds. Our media is not constructed with the use of glue as compared to your traditional um, evaporative media manufa manufacturers. Um, we don't use a glue 
instead we encase our media with a stainless steel encasing and uh this is also very very rigid as some people may be skeptical skeptical of its rigidity but we can assure you that it's passed multiple rigidity tests and it's also very just as rigid if not more rigid than any other competitors so uh not not having the use of glue in our media allows us to be compatible with all water types but more importantly ro and di water which is very aggressive water and can eat away at that glue which would then cause the media to melt or deteriorate or, or come apart over time um, we have been fiber loss tested with uh, less than one micron detection limit. Also, our media is non-hazardous or uh, or toxic in the air or water, and this is ROHS compliant. We've also um, achieved the Green Guard Gold standard, which is the highest standard you can achieve for um, hygienic evaporative media. Also, we have the VDI sixty two certification, which is the international highest standard for hygiene. Um, this is for our, our media as well as our product as a whole, which we'll get into a little bit later. But um, that's something that you may want to note too, because a lot of people claim to be BDI 6022, but only referring to their media and not the actual whole humidifier itself. Um, we're also um, fireproof to the Euro class A1 and ISO 1716, as well as ISO 1182, which is also the highest fire certification uh, in, in Europe. We are um, very close to becoming UL 900 certified, which is the most popular fire certification in North America. Um, we're just awaiting those results within the next couple of weeks. Okay, so talking a little bit more about our um, our pad efficiency, and we'll do this with a performance comparison. So here you can see depicted is uh, an efficiency chart. On the left, the y-axis, you have your efficiency in percentage, and across the x-axis on the bottom, we have your velocities. So starting at a very low velocity, the efficiencies between a glass deck media and our EVA pack media, as well as the glass pad media, is typically pretty close. But as you increase your velocity, the efficiencies drastically decrease in the, in the two competitors. Um, another thing to, to note is that while the competitors may be, uh, may be hanging in there a little bit, they're also using a 300 millimeter pad compared to EVA pack's 200 millimeter pad. So uh, pointing that out leads me to my next slide, which is our chart um, comparison of pressure drop. Um, as you can see here, EVAPAC is now depicted in this green line on the bottom, where you can see we still have our 200 millimeter pad where the next uh, closest competitor uses a 300 millimeter pad. So right off the bat, we'll be able to have a, a lower pressure drop than our competitors. But um, there's a couple other factors that go in to the pressure drop, not only uh, our pad. The way we construct and design our um, evaporative humidifying cooler, EVAPAC, is very unique compared to our competitors. EVAPAC has the lowest basin height of any other um, competitor in the market. It also has the lowest water, distri water distribution manifold height at the top. If you can see here where my la laser pointer is, um, this water distribution manifold of a competitor here is much thicker than ours, same with the basin. So this low profile design on top and bottom really allows us to increase the contact surface and uh, put more media in those spaces, which then can increase our efficiency uh, greatly. Um, so this custom tailorability 
really allows us to work closely with the customers and get them the most benefit and savings out of their dollar that they can. Another thing to notice in these two pictures is this red square pointing out our competitors' um, pumps, which are just in front of the, just in front of their basin, which is now extending their footprint uh, way past what ours would be, which is actually 23.6 inches, um, roughly two feet, which is very small for uh, which very small compared to others, and also allows you. So maybe squeeze it into some retrofit applications that you may not be able to squeeze our other competitors into. Um, okay. So moving on um, from our tailor-made customize customizability and our, our pressure drops and our pad leading to what everyone wants to know is your electricity cost savings and how it saves you money. So here's an example that we've used in the past to depict the annual savings you can reap by using EvaPad. So this example is uh, set with a 250,000 CFM at a at 0.2 inches of water column drop, air pressure drop. And using those metrics, we can deduce an uh, electrical savings of about 52,000 kilowatts. So depending where you are in the nation, you can convert those kilowatts to savings, which compare, comparatively speaking, in Arizona and California, um, equal out to be about 6,000 or $9,000 in saving a year. And uh, keep in mind, this is just for 250,000 CFM um, in some of these bigger data centers, uh, the hyperscale data centers get up to millions of CFM. So, and and lots of EVA packs. So that's that's just for one EVA pack. If you have multiple, at those velocities, you can really compound those savings, and uh, see see a big, big number there. Okay, EVA pack is unique in its maintenance. Um, Regards, our cassettes can be extracted either from the side, as you can see here, or in larger applications, you can actually get in front of the EVA pack and take it out from the front. Um, this is this is really unique because it saves time and also space that you will need to have to work around in tight spaces and air handlers. And uh, a lot of these maintenance guys will be very happy to have this um, feature. Another um, advantage to the EVA pack is what I referenced earlier to the VDI 6022 standard, meaning that there is no stagnant water in our basin. Everything is pitched and sloped perfectly to have um, no chance of water becoming stagnant and uh, giving bacteria the ability to grow. Same with our irrigation manifolds. They're also sloped and uniquely designed to prevent any stagnant water uh, being held up there and, and causing any bacterial growth or, or risks of Legionella. So these, these three factors really uh, give us a plug and play ability and make the maintenance easy and fast, uh, which, which in turn reduces your cost because you don't have to pay the maintenance guy to go in there um, to do the maintenance. And it also saves, um, saves the amount of trips you'll have to go in there too. So moving on to the different types of configurations you'll um, be presented with if you choose to pursue our EVA pack. So we have two different configurations. One is recirculating water. The other is a direct water. We'll get into the recirculating water first. Here you can see a schematic drawing of our EVA pack set up in a recirculated water uh, configuration. You can see the water enters here at stage one through this gate valve and into the water basin. From there, it's pumped up over um, the media through the water distribution manifolds. Water cascades over the media where it's evaporated and and pushed forward down the plenum or or a duct 
to your application area. And then that excess water is then caught again by the basin to either be recirculated or drained down into the drain. Um, we typically see the recirculated water configuration with tap water. Uh, this is because it um, creates the ability to reduce water usage by recirculating that tap water until the conductivity sensor probe here noted in seven. These this is a um, overflow probe, uh, conductivity probe, and then a, a fill probe that all connect to a control panel, which we'll talk about in the next slide. But um, yeah, you typically use this recirculated configuration with uh, tap water because you'll want to um, keep rinsing water over the pad to reduce the ability of scale forming. Um, and that'll be crucial in reducing reducing your maintenance uh, trips and replacing your pads, increasing your lifespan. So every um, recirculated water configuration comes standard with a dedicated control panel, which you see depicted here on the right. Um, it is compatible with your typical BAS systems, which is uh, your Modbus or Lawnworks, and uh, those are all provided at the time of purchase as well. So moving into our second configuration, we have our direct water configuration. This type of configuration is typically used with RO, DI water, or actually extremely hard water. And the reason for those two types of water being applicable with this configuration is um, if you have really hard water, you're going to have a lot of minerals and deposits that will that will form on the pad. And in order to reduce that, you'll want to just straight flush over the media consistently in order to reduce that scale formation. And um, the reason that you can use this direct water configuration with really hard water is that you don't want to save any of that water after it's been passed once. They'll just directly drain because that water we know is going to be full of scale and minerals that we don't want to put back up over the pad more than once. So that's that's one application that it probably is. You'll see, but it is compatible with that hard water. The more the more typical um, configuration you'll see with direct water is the use of RO or DI water. This becomes extremely beneficial in, in the fact that not a lot of our other competitors uh, media can withstand that aggressive water quite as long as our can because we don't use glue, which gets eaten and then deteriorates the media. So without the use of glue, our media can withstand this aggressive water for longer durations. And also one unique thing to note about um, the use of RO is that it really increases your WUE, which is your water usage efficiency. Um, by using RO water, you're able to inject the media only a certain amount to where nothing will be coming out the bottom of the pad. All of the water will be evapor evaporated before it reaches the bottom. Um, so here's an example with a shaded area where maybe you wet about 50% of the pad so um, you're only putting water on the pad that is needed. Uh, this really helps with your accurate proportional control and your pre precise humidity control. And also you're, you're not wasting a drop of water. So every, every ounce that you use is, is being evaporated and transformed into cooling and, and humidification, which is really ideal for these data centers, which are very aware of energy and water water usage. Um, here's a, a picture of our electric valve, our ECV valve. Um, the water level will modulate according to a zero to 10 valve signal, which is then received by the ECV valve. So it's very, very tight turn down ratio. I think it's 37 to one. Um, so we can, we can control very tight um, levels there. Okay, so moving on to where uh, we manufacture EVAPAC. 
EvaPack is currently only being manufactured in two of our 12 locations, as you can see depicted by these green stars here. One is in our Armstrong Hunt office, which is in Granby, Quebec. And the other is in our Debitec branch, which is in Dieppe, France. France. Sorry, excuse me. Um, this is not a limitation to us at all. We have the ability to move many of manufacturing to any of our other 10 locations um, very easily. We just have not had the, need, the means to do so yet, but um, that is an option for all of our customers. Okay, so to talk a little bit about EvaPack in the real life, well, I know that all of you are aware of our case study as our uh, um, prompt to register also came with the ability to download a case study, which is this case study here at um, our Scaleway DC5 hyperscale data center in France. Um, so if you guys don't have that, you, I encourage you to download it. It's some very good information there. And um, I figured I'd, if you do have it, you may want to see some pictures and uh, maybe hear a little bit more about it as to it is a real life scenario. So here's a picture of the actual building front um, and where it's located in Paris. DC5 has about 24 megawatts of IT power with 12 private suites providing 1.8 megawatts of IT power to each. That's a total surface area of about 16,000 square meters. Here's a picture of the outside of the building where the air in intake is, is being brought in. You can see this corrugated um, louver section. Uh, here's the interior picture, the ventilation grid uh, with motorized dampeners. So this is just to give you a little depiction of the scale of the building. Uh, it's, it's very large, it's a hyperscale data center. And so they directly bring in outside air through these louvers and the outside of the building, which is a perfect scenario for evaporative and direct adiabatic cooling. Um, here's some examples of the different configurations we proposed initially to the data center. Uh, a couple different staggered formations or V formations. Um, same with some offset formations here you can see. But uh, this formation right here is the one that they chose to go with, just a straight line. Um, and, and the reason is that they chose this formation is they were really interested in, in reducing the number of drain valves to as little as they can. And they were able to do this with this configuration, uh, only having two drains for all four of our cassettes. There's actually two cassettes here butted up next to each other, and then two on the sides with space in between for draining, as you can see depicted here. Um, so an, an internal picture of the application after it's all set up is right here. And it gives you a nice, nice picture of just how big this uh, application was and and what our media looks like in, in a real life scenario. Um, the next picture I'm going to show you is after a year of runtime, you can see an up close picture of our media using the RO water, which is very ideal uh, because you won't have any scale formation. There's very, very small amounts. You can see here in the gray areas of some dust buildup. Um, and maybe some other other materials coming in through the air intake. But uh, notice that the, the bottom of the basin has very, very, very minimal amounts of residue, almost brand new looking besides maybe here and there, you can see some small white formations. Um, but that's after one year. And I think up, up to date now, it's been over two and a half years and um, the media looks almost exactly the same still. So that's just uh, an example of, of and proof to the longevity of our media without the use of glue and the use of DIRO water. Um, very attractive and appealing to these data center companies to be able to hold on to a media for so long and not have to replace it. Really get gets your ROI down and uh, becomes a great fit for a data center application. 
Okay, so uh, a little overview and, and boasting on on the EVA pack. It does have the largest contact surface um, in its class with evaporation efficiency. It also has the best in class energy efficiency with the lowest pressure drop. Best in class serviceability with cassettes and fittings. Uh, very easy access from all sides. All humidifier components can be disassembled for complete unit cleaning. It's fireproof, safe, and hygienic. Um, it has the VDI 6022 hygienic standards. The pad thicknesses can be easily modified to the inch. Whatever you may need, we can uh, find find a fit. And uh, most recently, we were awarded our Green Guard Gold certification, which is huge and um, will really allow us to um, get into some spots that may have been hesitant before. Um, so that's that's a little bit about the advantages of EvaPack, and we strongly encourage everyone here to utilize our Armstrong University. Knowledge is is not shared is uh, knowledge not shared is energy wasted, as we like to say. Um, but if you get on there via this link, which you'll have once we uh, forward out the recording of this web webinar, you can see maybe you guys may be more interested in these HVAC courses. We assumed with your interest in the data center market. Uh, there are some really nice classes on there that you guys can attend for free. At, they're at your fingertips. So we encourage you to get on there and use that. Um, so having said that, I will wrap up with our, um, our promise where Armstrong provides intelligent system solutions that improve utility performance, lower energy consumption, and reduce environmental emissions while providing an enjoyable experience, which is really our main goal here is to make sure everybody uh, has a great experience with us and is able to pass that along to whoever they do business with further in the future. Um, so that's that's it, guys. That's all I have. I, I think I did a pretty decent job ending about 20 minutes early for some Q and A's, which I'm uh, taking a peek at now. It looks like there are a few. Um, so if, if anyone has any questions or comments, I um, suggest you place them in the Q&A section here. And Joel and I will uh, take a look now and, and see what we can answer. Let's see. Um, Joel, have you been looking at these ready to answer? It looks like there's one from Brian Evans here. Is the EVA pack only available to Armstrong or are there manufacturer contracts to use in other makes equipment such as UMP or energy labs. I, I did answer Brian in the Q and A, but I guess for everybody, um, that's a good that's a good uh, question that alludes to um, kind of a more in depth answer. That is, uh, we do have Eva Pack available to go through OEMs, and we encourage the use of Eva Pack with OEMs. We have a kit where it's just the cassette and the water. Um, but, uh, a lot of the advantage of Eva pack comes from our basin design and our, and our bespoke frame, uh, frame that gives a higher efficiency and a higher, uh, facial, um, media to, um, contact the surface area Yeah, you know, to surface area. So, um, we, we certainly will work with OEMs. We, we love the idea of making cassettes for OEMs because. The cassette is the part that really gives the biggest advantage, mm -hmm. um, but, but we, we'd like to discuss it on a case by case scenario with each OEM. We have worked with uh, at least 1 OEM in North America named Basex out of Oregon, Redmond, Oregon, and uh, we're certainly willing to work with more. Yeah, great question, Brian. Thanks for that. Um, okay, that's all the questions I'm seeing right now. Uh, here's one more. Um, does EvaPack achieve the ASHRAE 90.4 energy standard for data centers? Hmm. Let's see, Joel, I, um, I think it does. Yes, I'm pretty sure it does. Uh, yeah, yes, we are ASHRAE 90.4. Go ahead, Joel. Sorry, I might have to review ninety point four again, but um, I think that's more of a generic uh, 
generic standard for data centers. So I'm sure we'd I'm sure we'd meet that requirement. Yeah, looking here, yes, yes, it does um, achieve that standard. Okay, any more questions out there? Not seeing any more coming in. Um, uh, if that's it, and, and Joel, you don't have anything more to add, um, I guess we can wrap it up at this point. And thank you all very much for attending. I hope it was beneficial to you, and I hope you uh, download our case study and our technical document and, and be sure to reach out to Joel or I with any questions you may have afterwards or any comments or concerns. Yeah, I guess I guess my final thoughts are just, um, you know, this was a high level view of Eva Pack. If you have any specific questions, let us know. We're very flexible with our design. Um, we're always willing to accommodate and we love looking into uh, specific applications. So um, please give us a call and we'll be ready. Perfect. Thank you all very much and uh, have a great day and a great rest of your week.